this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at how your phone application can send a really small amount of information like an ID to a server running on the internet and get back some kind of customized response depending on what it sends and um, I'm going to continue working with the servlet that I set up in the last tutorial but um, I just want to point out that if, if you don't want to get into Java servlet programming, which sometimes feels a bit heavyweight for stuff like this, um, as I said before, you can use PHP and stuff like that. And in fact, if you search for, um, let's see, Cave of Programming, that's my website, PHP JSON, which is um, we're going to look at shortly, then um, you can find this page where we look at a simple client server setup where the client is JavaScript actually and the server is PHP and that this little file here is basically a complete little server that can um, send back some data and it can get a ID that's been sent by your Android application. So um, again I'm not going to go into that here but in this tutorial I just want to show you um, as I say, like um, how you can send just a really little bit of information from your phone app to a server and then receive it at the other end. So let's go first to the phone application here. In fact, let's not. Let's go to the server first. So here I've got my Java servlet and this could be a PHP script and it's just outputting hello world at the moment. But I'm going to output some more stuff here. I'm going to say let's let's get we can we can get the Android application to send an ID to this and maybe I don't know a username and a password let's say and we can receive those as what we call request parameters. So here I'm going to say something like string ID equals request and this this request object deals with um, stuff that's going to be sent to the server in the kind of get request in this case. So your, your Android program will make a request to this server and you can get information about that request from this request object. And let's say request.get param parameter and here I'll say um, ID. So we, we can imagine that we're, we're going to send an ID from our phone application and in fact I'll just leave it with ID for this tutorial and we'll look at something a bit more interesting next time. And then let's say that if ID is equal to null then let's say um, here um, out.println no ID and in fact what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to copy this out.println and I'm going to paste one here and in here I'm going to put a opening HTML tag which looks like this and this is how you start an HTML document and I'm going to copy it again and at the end here I'm going to put a closing HTML tag which is it just looks the same but it's got a slash in it like this and I know I'm going if you haven't seen HTML before this is going to be like really in at the deep end but um, uh, I'll plow on and I'll refer you to other tutorials if um, if you want to know more about HTML um, or that sort of thing. So I'm going to say I'm going to get the ID from the request parameter. I'm going to say if the ID is null, let's say out.print and then no ID. And I'll also I'll surround this in p HTML tags, paragraph tags. So we have an opening one there and a closing one with a slash in it there, and that will just make this print in its own paragraph. I'm going to say else and else will say um, let's say ID is colon and then we'll just echo back the ID so here I'll put the ID so let's say plus ID plus and then the closing P tag like this I think that's good um, so let's run this and when you actually first I'll save it because there seems to be a problem where if you run it without saving it it saves it automatically but then it seems to sometimes run the old version and I don't want that and um, 
So that's that's the cached old version. Let's try, let's try refreshing that. Or is it actually? I'm not sure anymore. Well, let's just clean it to be sure. Project clean and get rid of that. And let's get rid of this. And now let's select server.java and change this to hello world exclamation mark so that we can see it running. And I'll click run again. Well, I'll try this. So here we go, and it's yeah, okay, yeah, because it says no ID. Um, but now, what I want to show you is that um, now, if I put a question mark here, which which is kind of signifying the end of the URL as such, now I can have pairs of parameters in the form name of the parameter equals and some value, let's say 777. And then if I wanted another parameter, I'd have a ampersand and then name equals such and such or password equals such and such and so on like that arbitrarily but let's just have ID here so I've got question mark ID equals let's have one two three actually and hit return and now it says ID equals one two three and now when you create client server programs which is what we're really doing here um, or at least a client server system I should say it's really important to try to test each part separately because you don't want to use your Android application to test this server. You want to test it by hand, if possible, like this, um, as much as you can anyway. And uh, and that's why here, since since this just accepts a normal URL, because um, we're doing a get, technically, I can just type stuff in the URL and I can test this properly before my phone att attempts to talk to it, which is a good idea. And now the final step is, let's just send this. Um, via a phone. But first I'm going to upload this to the internet. I'm going to, I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to right click here and go to export war file and I'll export to android server demo dot war. Make sure I've got overwrite existing file selected and click finish. And actually let's just do that again because I just noticed that I selected optimize for Tomcat 7 and I don't think that's a good idea because I, I, I don't know what the um, application server that I'm using, CloudBees, I don't know what version, what kind of server they're using. So I've exported it again and I think that's okay and now let's go to uh, CloudBees. So um, where are we? Uh, not there and Um, yeah, here we go. And now I'm going to upload a WAR file um, here, and this is the application that I created in the last tutorial. And I'm going to upload Android Server Demo WAR. Click Finish. And when this is de deployed again, I'm going to test it by hand and make sure that this works. Okay, and go to the URL, which is going to be here. I've already got it open from last time, and here we go. And that seems to be working. Let's just put an ID in. ID equals five six seven five. There we go. So now let's go to um, Android. Let's go to our Android development here, which is here. And I've created a new project, and I've called it JSON Downloader for reasons that I'll explain in a couple of tutorials probably. But I've just copied the downloader from the tutorial on a basic downloader. So again it just uses a new a URL. It just um, opens stream on the URL and then downloads from it. But now let's go back to Google here and uh, sorry back to Chrome and I'm just going to copy this URL here, the whole thing. And I'm going to paste that here instead of this BBC News URL. And we could put any parameter there at the end. So let's say here, string ID equals uh, 99. And here, let's just paste it on. So let's say plus ID. And um, oh yeah, that's got to be in double quotes because it's a string. Or we could use integer.toString if it was an integer. 
And now finally, um, I think I'll still echo it back in the debug, so I won't do anything too interesting on the phone end yet. Um, but here, I'm just gonna, this is just gonna now co um, contact the URL. Let's actually run it while I talk. And, um, hopefully then we'll see that the server is gonna send back a response which will depend on whether there's an ID or not. And, um, actually, this isn't gonna be very exciting because the server could send back a different response depending on what ID we send. So like up here in my servlet program, where are we? Not there. Here. I could, I could look at the ID and depending on what ID we get here, I could send back a different response and I could get stuff from a database using that ID. So let's just check now and we'll see if we've got stuff back from the um, server. Go to DDMS. And here we can see the response from my server and we're looking at the, the raw HTML because this debug output isn't going to interpret the HTML in any way. But you can see it says ID is 99 and hello world. So we've sent an ID to a server that's ru actually running on the internet and we've got a response back which depended on that ID. Although in this case it only depended whether the ID was there or not. So not, not so exciting yet, but has a lot of potential. And uh, if you want to send more complex stuff, you, you might realise that there's a little problem here, which is that um, there's a couple of problems really. Um, one problem is that the um, the ID you can't con it, there's a lot of characters that you couldn't put in an ID. If you want to send a username, for example, the username or a password, let's say the password could have question marks and ampersands in it and all sorts, slashes that would screw up your URL and we're going to look at that in the next tutorial and then we're going to move on to looking at doing posts because there's a limit as to how much data you can put in a URL and we're going to move on to doing posts which allow you to send uh, pretty much unlimited amounts of data. So that's it for this tutorial and until next time, happy coding.